is new business. And I believe we're going to have to call for a motion to, to the amend the agenda for an LR. I'll make that motion. Floor recognizes Senator Rearward. He makes the motion to amend the agenda for an LR. Second by Senator Covers Up. Question. Question by Senator Not Afraid of Lodge Grass District. All those in favor of amending the agenda for this LR, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Secretary of the House reports 13-0-0. So the agenda has now have been amended. So the next item on business is an LR. This time we will recognize, for recognize Chairman of the Education Committee, Senator Rilbert. Resolution of the Pro Tribal Legislative confirm Verdina Wilbert as cabinet head of the Education Department. Motion to adopt by Senator Covers Up. Second by Senator Alden of the Bighorn District. Legislating findings, whereas the Crow Tribal Legislature this legislature has a power and duty under the Article 5, Section 2 of the Crow Tribal Constitution to promulgate and adopt resolutions in accordance with the Tribal Constitution and federal laws for the governance of the Crow Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 5A of the Crow Tribal Constitution provides that the specific duties and authorities of the executive branch chairman, including authority to appoint cabinet members, including a comptroller who shall be bonded, chief executive officer, and other cabinet positions adopted by the adopted by tribal ordinance, resolution, or policy, who shall all serve in subordinate positions to the tribal officials, and whereas the legislature has the statutory authority to confirm Crow Tribal Executive Branch Cabinet members as provided in Crow Tribal Joint Action Resolution 0204, titled a Joint Action Resolution of the Crow Tribal Legislature and Executive Branches to confirm Chairman Selection Executive Branch Cabinet Heads and CEO. And whereas the position of Cabinet Head of the Tribal Education Department is of vital importance to achieve the full potential of members of the Crow Tribe, and whereas it is critical that the position of cabinet head of the Education Department be filled by an individual with extensive experience in the areas of education policy, higher education support, and, in, and Indian education, and whereas the Executive Branch Chairman Darren O'Cloud has appointed Berdina Rilbert to serve as cabinet head of education, and whereas Miss Wilbert is a member of the Crow Tribe with a commendable history of service to the Crow Tribal community with extensive experience in a field of Indian education, higher education, and educational policies, and is well qualified to serve in this capacity. And whereas Miss Wilbert has appeared and testified before the Education Committee during a confirmation hearing held on May 15th and has received the Committee's recommendation to the legislature to be the cabinet head of the education department. Now, therefore, it be it hereby resolved by the Crow Tribal Legislature in special session that Dana Rilbert is duly confirmed as the director of the Crow Tribal Education Department and upon certification, oath shall exercise all duties and authorities in accordance with all applicable federal and Crow Tribal law. Thank you. This now brings us to the 30-minute presentation. At this time, the 30-minute presentation will be um, for the nominee, but you don't have to take the full 30 minutes. It's up to you on that. 
And then when we get to uh, debate part, is when, uh, if there's any questions, that's when you can ask your questions now, or then is when we get to debate. At this time, we'll hear the nominee, and then we'll come back to the chairman of the committee for final approval or disapproval. At this time, the floor recognizes, uh, <laughs> floor recognizes the nominee. Floor recognizes Secretary of the House, Oak Grove. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Speaker, uh, there was a typo, and I just wanted to make a uh, clarification and therefore be a result of the first sentence. It's duly confirmed as cabinet, not director. That will be noted. Thank you. Oh, Speaker of the House, Legislative Body, my friends, Bielatuk, Basania, who should be the Gawalasha, Bashti Malasha, Birdie Real Bird Hawk, Balashtan Laja, Birdina Real Bird Hawk, Bieshit Chidik, Bivili Gosh Reno District, Kogawa. Balak Bajaha Wat Gadam, Waisish, daughter in law, Aaron, and Bashbabi Dad Dubuk, Lucia Shishbala Chachum, Jedish Bala Dubuk, be qualified, could it to carry on this position because I have a Bachelor's of Science in Elementary Education, a Master's in School Counseling, I have 31 years of classroom experience, plus. I've acquired leadership skills from my 31 years of in education. I'm a retired um, teacher from um, school district 17H. I've worked um, in Crow Agency out of the 31 years I was in Crow Agency, Crow Public School for 10 years. I started teaching kindergarten. Um, then I went to second grade, third grade, then back to first grade. So I've taught those grades in Crow School. Then I transferred to Hardin School because of Kotila Balakbajay Shpala, too good at him. Daycare, Walu, good Crow Agency. So I had to uh, move to Hardin, bought a house in Hardin, and I go in daycare, go to Balakbajay, go to Kogomaliwam. I started for uh, fourth grade. Him in a um, fourth grade teach it by my Bali that I was the first Indian teacher in that building. Um, they had teachers aides at that, not a real you know classroom management. Kraja Hila for I was the first Indian. Him kagona bashti the lineup could act up or pull up group at that time. And Kolala Kagombiro Gawa got a go classroom made a chill. All the Biro Gawa, Biro Gawa parents, that go all the lineup could have dog a lushu. I ended up with about 15 real strong students that time. Him Kugaliti, the guy made it through. That was my first experience in the white um, world, I guess. And, um, the funny garage cannot this besides the point had da Isaac Shigaru um Shigaru um Bashir is a guy first in line could have cut to that him could have a shugali do ga him going years later about three years ago I've seen in a saw school and you've been to bingo home Wednesday nights school I'm going me to get a chica could I go on opium could go on sheesh the could go on Bingo liya kanto. Nei saak shi gai dei shi nei miru gai shi nei nuwa rik tada tiga. Him awa ga iu galabu mam ahi di yo. I was selling food at that time and I went to fourth grade kone class bago nu shkuk because I bi miru ga koi gyo rupak him. Hiraga wa miru ga gyo kuk. 
Okay, anyway, those kinds of things, I, I've endured all this uh, prejudice um, while I was working. At Dagogon, I was in Cro uh, Hardin School District for about over 18, about 20 years, 21 years at Bigolpilich. And um, through that time, um, I've taught um, third grade, um, fifth grade, Kagon, Balakbaja, first grade, Kusuyam, reading, teach, Bayawak. Uh, if you reading, teach it, Bhagavad Cook reading, you I done. Not the very first time they learn how to read. I wanted to experience that and help my son. So then, first grade, Kusawali, Bigola, eight years at the co first grade classroom school. Kagon, Bigishtada, Kagon, eighth grade, him all the eighth grade, Kushbali, Balakbaja, Pishawala, watch Cook in his educational um, progress age of Gisawai. Him going um, as a teacher, I, that was a, one of the advantages that I think that he had because back to uh, first grade, first grade, Kony Gishim K9, K, he was reading level at K9, him going on. Uh, first grade level, he said I came. Kagon Kotila that summer, Vila Awoya. Second grade, Kudehim, Kalas, two, three, get it. So I helped him raise his uh, reading level. Anyway, so I taught, I taught reading for quite a while. And then I went into uh, middle school, Kudewa, Kala, by that time, Master's Balkulu took. Uh, school counselor, we get a him kagon ka eighth grade ko mai daja retire go pak. So that's my years of experience in the school system. Um, as a, a cabinet head for education, I'd like to hilakasha um, immersion ivi uh, bash We have that big our uh, our uh, grant immersion grant could have and. Um, Three-year-olds, COVID guide you with you. It's a, it we're targeting three-year-olds because at um, three-year-old brain can have, it can acquire um, the way the brain is at three it, um, it languages can have, um, acquire gojeo kodi much koi three-year-olds koi the we're working with Head Start three-year-old. There's two groups of three-year-old classrooms. Uh, and then uh, daycares, the college daycare and the songbird. And um, we're having um, language summit deal in April, 1st of April, first part of April. Um, we did invite all of you uh, back then. And then now this um, summer, we have um, the uh, practicum for the parents. And we also have. Um, the seminar, and then um, the summer institute. So those are for whoever would like to um, attend. And then um, we're faced with one of the problems is uh, parent involvement is very low uh, with immersion. And uh, parent meetings, the wife of parents, this summer, we're, it's going to be a challenge but we're gonna try to get as many parents as we can to work with them and to work with their children. And as you all know, um, and then, um, so that's one of the jobs um, that I like to do is to uh, make the communities in, on the reservation aware of the um, language. Um, it's going to take a nose dive. And they go up to the guy, and they go, okay, be ho ho, be the guy, log. Be the guy, be ho, can you? Okay. Hey, 
इलाके यूनो बने हिले ना टाट साइन लाच भे मना कोश ते कुछ पावी दोश कोवीर गए नू चीन के खगोन इलाके बले को साख हिले ने वीर गए नेश the our language is taking a nose dive and to avoid that nose dive uh, we'd like to concentrate on the three-year-olds and the younger people um, but right now in my immersion who have three-year-olds three-year-olds co co concentrate on kopu another thing that um, <clears throat> i work with is um higher ed and um in a higher ed uh, one of our goals is to um, possibly uh, open up the Little Bighorn College and make it free for all Crow students. And that's kind of one of our, our dreams at the Ed Department. And um, uh, I hope that we can do that by fall so that uh, the high school graduates would get a good head start Hey, kagon two years they make a majima kagon the next two years uh, university gestalt that would be um, excellent. Um, another thing that that um, I'm working on is um, hilake um, daycare birugayu um, jiwak. I I would like to help education um, not education of the little children all the way up to the um, you know uh, um, just like the other day this woman was in her office and she said education basement him in a basement called me Gishiwa Kakagoi College, Dave Nagate, Little Bighorn College, called Majimik, and we're helping her. And then, um, Canadian Gadish at daycare, um, center Sadaji at DIY Walk, and I'd like to see the little kids' development, Kanagogo Kagoi, when they get to kindergarten, or no, when they go to Head Start after daycare. Um, not development, could I move on? Could I like our kids aren't ready for kindergarten? I know why it is. It's because we're not working with our children. And we want to avoid that. We would like to, uh, I want the daycare to read to the kids every day. That's important. And he needs center sedesh diawulu kina development. Kadesh ka develop kopu he magari shumal shidu motor skills all that. Badish develop kopu kagon ka head start dollar ku kodai kopa ga kindergarten all that. Ready good English. I mean, that's. Uh, what I see right now, and that's a really big need that I observe. Um, another thing is, um, um, you would, Hilake, you building mall, um, they want us out of there, and I'd like to possibly get a, um, Bala Mila Gugip Gulish, 200,000, kind of. Well, the Tekina modular stubum neoiwak, or stubum, put it up someplace around Crow Agency for our offices, and that's one of the things I we like to do. But eventually, Head Start can call up him. Head Start building, oh, need to call condemned building. Can I push one? A hundred and three kids the module. But that's a lot of kids for a uh, building that's condemned over there. Um, possibly, maybe, our, or my dream is that they'd have a good school. And we, we are in need of a lot of buildings for offices, office spaces for classrooms and whatever. Um, and I think that's it. Or there's all, a lot of things I'm working on.
We're always working on budget. But bala but chimao kuk um a la hamu shokulagia sawak um it be a I I watch the money and I wanna spend it the way we're supposed to spend it. So that's that's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. That concludes her presentation. Now we'll next bring us to the committee chairman. The chairman of the education committee is Senator Rilbert. So at this time, Speaker of the House will ask for approval or disapproval at this time of the nomination. Thank you, Speaker, Secretary, members of the body. Guest, uh, yesterday we had a meeting in the Speaker's office and there was nine present, that's counting the uh, executive uh, education department. And we had five senators there. And we, uh, we asked, you know, questions and uh, concerns. And we were in that uh, meeting for almost two hours. It probably lasted another couple hours. But uh, anyways, we, uh, <clears throat> We had a vote, and it was uh, five yes, zero no, zero abstain. So uh, the education uh, committee is approving for approved at that time for approval to bring it on to the floor. All right. So we got an approval from the chairman of the education committee. That brings us to debate at this time. Do any of the senators have any questions for the nominee? Floor organizes Senator Alden of the Bighorn District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, members of the body, and Education Department from Executive. Um, my question is kind of directed towards the cabinet head, not specifically towards the actual uh, her, um, approval process, but just a question. In regards to, um, she mentioned the money that was uh, allocated to her uh, department in uh, back in, I believe it was CLB 1302. It was approval of amendments to the fiscal year 2013 travel budget to authorize expenditures of proceeds from the Big Metal Development Agreements and under the line item. Now, therefore, be it enacted by Crow Tribe Legislature, there's section one, and there's A, B, and there's, it goes all the way to seven, and on six, there's one specifically in there that in the amount of 200,000 for travel expenditures specifically to support, I believe the handouts been handed out, to support travel cost share and infrastructure needs of the Head Start program shall be allocated to the new budget account department title Head Start. Have you received that money? No, we haven't received it. Okay, I mean, that's all I wanted to hear. And then uh, on that note, I just wanted to kind of bring the attention maybe to either the Revenue Committee or as a body as a whole, just to maybe we should follow up on some of these. And uh, because that leads us to the, to the section where we always fight for education money in here. And, and every year, this happened, used to happen to us a lot, where we used to fight for education money they would go over and then they would just disappear into maybe some other department or something. So that that kind of a, what's the point of fighting for education money when you know that, that it's never gonna get to our destination where we want it to get to. So that's just bringing the attention to the revenue committee or the body as a whole, so. All right, thank you. Before organized, Senator goes ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, uh, members of the body, uh, Chica Birdie, for uh, being here today and waiting this long. I uh, was on the same, uh, this uh, bill number, C, uh, CLB 13-02, okay. and then the, how we appropriated that, uh, I believe it was 2.5 million, go to H, uh, 200, uh, 200. 0.250 and you know, the amount, this is what it reads, uh, the amount of 200,000 for tribal expenditures specifically to support tribal cost share and infrastructure needs of the Head Start program 
shall be allocated to a new budget account department title and start. And you, uh, in listening to you, that I know they want the education department to uh, have their own building, it sounds like, outside of the administration building. You have data. Uh, we are in the, our Head Start program of 103 kids at that. No, this is okay. Uh, before we keep going here, not in the name of Head Start, I can't get money. So then, in a revised letter, go to Paguk Chairman, uh, Chairman's office, and reworded it because um, um, in the policies and procedures, you cannot get money for in the name of Head Start. So then. Um, education touch and it's for office building for head, head start uh, central staff and office building for education department so we're getting two modulars at 98,000 each and um, you know two two separate offices could but that that's that hey Kogon my other um, want I my other goal is to get a, a school for the Head Start Center for a hundred and three kids. Not this not with this money, but with some other monies hopefully. Uh so let me get this straight. It was your before or after the fact that we passed it. Yeah again number that the cut book it says two hundred thousand not 200,000 allocate for the portion. So and this is what I'm hearing. It sounds like then you gave the letter to the chairman to allocate the 200,000. Just reward it and took head start think, out. This is my point. You can't do that unless you reappropriated in that language. At the time to do that was on the floor at that time. And, oh. and, and so it might be that You've already ordered the modulars, so this money is going over there. This is our question right now. And and if they wanted to do that, that should have happened on that day before this body. I want that not after the fact, because we've already allocated money. So in other words, it's, there's a zero line item in the Head Start budget of 200000 is what I'm hearing. So that that's just something that, uh, and I believe uh, Senator Olden is saying, I believe we have to go and ask the questions to probably the finance director, <coughs> CPA Carla, that these money these monies were appropriated to what it was intended for. And so, okay, that's information for us. It was intended for central office staff. Okay. Please. Thank you. All right. Floor recognizes Secretary of the House, Okro. I'm just going to speak on behalf of uh, Ms. Zilber here. And in regards to this allocation, I think we're just misinterpreting it and we're kind of getting off track. But, you know, if you really read it, it says it's specifically to support child cost share and infrastructure needs of the Head Start program. So, there. You're, the money you're talking about is already allocated to that to the purchase of these buildings. That got. It's just that according to their policy, they can't say uh, Head Start because of their uh, uh, their guidelines. Now CFR is very popular. just so much, but just there might be penalties. If that the money is allocated for that. And that's why they're able to purchase these uh, buildings and Mazabs. I think we're trying to jump in the gun, trying to panic on something that we don't need to. So I just want to add that as clarification. And I think we need to get back on track on what we're, the purpose of this meeting. Thank you. Floor organizer Senator Alden of the Bighorn District. I mean, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I understand that uh, confirmation process and this was just kind of a subject and that we're, um, we understand that. We allocate like 
maybe the language needed to be relanguaged at the, at the time. I understand that, but uh, the purpose is that we give 200,000 pretty much to education that it's not cabinet said they haven't received it. So they haven't received it. It's allocated, but they haven't received it or whatnot. So that's the point. We we haven't we haven't received it, but we've ordered the uh, or all the paperwork's done for modulars, and all we have to do is um, get a signature from the chairman, and then um, take it to the place where we're ordering it. But everything is um, ready, ready to go, but we haven't we haven't gotten a signature. Organized Senator goes ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and uh, Secretary, uh, and the members of the body. I know that this is a confirmation, uh, but but I'm going to make a comment, and, and, and I disagree with uh, you know, uh, the Secretary of the House, with all due respect. But at the time, as I'm recalling. I recall that it was because it was condemned. The word was condemned. The Head Start was condemned. And when it came in, it was supposed to go to the Head Start. It's all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. And, and so now I'm hearing about the modulars now, that this money is going to be deferred to the modulars. So, but in, and now you're also uh, uh, very, uh, with all, you know, you're saying that we can't get any Head Start money, I mean, according to the policy. So we've got to change the policy and ask for that money to be deferred to the Education Department. But what I'm saying is this, next time I believe it would be more, it would be a lot better so that we can avoid these kind of uh, confusion. If we need money, if, if we need the money, I know, uh, you know, ask, you know, for this body, and we, we will do our part by doing what we're supposed to do, by amending it. So that's all I'm saying. There's, there's confusion right now, but I was led to believe that it was going to be for Head Start uh, uh, building. So I know things have changed. It's a, uh, a new administration and so forth. So, but I think we should continue with the confirmation process but it, it is good information, is what I'm saying. Let me say one more thing. It, would, it con condemned Nigel Agon. Head Start was central office. The director and all her um, central staff, there's about mm, 15, 15 Igararu. And they um, took them out of the tribal building in, from their office and they placed them over at the Casino. Yeah, the old casino on the top part, the old casino. And the old casino is condemned. And that's where their office was. And at that time, um, computers all could hook up Kajamayuli and Kura. They had to get on their grant solutions, I mean, uh, their CAP 60, which is a, that's where they um, report in for their grant. Him couldn't be called Guranku Cap 60 because they haven't got um, Head Start hasn't um, they needed to get in there to make some reports and they haven't been reporting and so then our Kagonka move foot by Wawakaji the central staff and Kura Iguha Galagoni Balam Hugalaga. That's how I started this. It, I, it was just the um, the staff office for central central staff cook. Floor recognizes Senator not afraid of the Bighorn District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, body, and Yes. Um, Bertie, I just want to congratulate you on your cabinet appointment. 
Uh, I've got two questions kind of uh, off track. How's about the confirmation hearing? Did I ask you questions? Could I have to you? So, anyway, I want, I've got two questions to ask, and first question is uh, Head Start. Government grants could you give me money from grants? And uh, my question would be that how the government sequestration will affect the federal programs like the Head Start? Is it going to affect the federal cut to do it? Is it going to affect the Head Start? And are we going to lose any like teachers, teachers' aid? However, go be concerned, guys. Go. That's my first question. Uh, yeah, there is 5% cut already. Okay, in that 5% cut, the um, fiscal manager, she's, um, she is cutting in the areas of, um, um, they're not cutting teachers. It, like your, your question, you want to know if they're cutting teachers, and we're not cutting teachers. And I'm not too sure where they're cutting, but I know that it's it's not um, staff, not too much in staff. Okay. Um, second question would be: uh, I read some place in World News that uh, any in native Indian. Indian country, Head Start programs, on the list there was pro Head Start programs and the lowest 10% of all Head Start programs. Um, what is your plans to improve that score? According to the past three, four years. So. Non-compliance is going to have 10. And it's all from mismanagement. And la a year ago, April, letter gonna include letter gonna include two, saying that it's gonna going into com competition or competing one. From non competing, it was a non competing. Then it was going into competing. And now, uh, in a deficiency stage, call both. And some of the things were the Bagadish folders all got incomplete. They have to have a certain health checkup strategy like eyes, ears, uh, teeth, and shots all like up to date. Kanadic folders all they have to be in line. And out of 304 four folders, they only had like 76 folders complete. So they were lacking all those folders. And he named Memorandum of Agreement with the, with the schools and IHS. And, and they would help them with he named dental, dental checkups, hearing, eyes, and uh, checkups that I got. And the special needs kids Kunapa, eight schools, memorandum of agreement, conduct school psychologist, Sadwa Kine Magadish Kukshiomogo. Hey, in a memorandum of agreement, Sidish Hamnidik. Hate to say this, that uh, we need a good director for Head Start. Because he's not going to compete in Kudam. It's, it's uh, still going down, and it's still. Uh, nothing's happening, and uh, it's out of my hand. We I told Junior. I said, "Be with Jay Chitta, be with Jay Chitta." The director today should be in pick up son. I really have no say in um, what goes on with a lot of what goes on with Head Start. Okay, um, I think that change from positive change has started the ball rolling from our previous program. And I, I believe today that, again, 
So what, what I hear you, Kala Kamala Chilishikte, net ten percent low Gadesh, Kamala Kushke, Kamakila, that's the way I see. And that top positive change has has stepped up and changed the program and now like it puts you as cabinet head. And there's a new director here, I hear, from from this positive change. And uh literally and that was just wanted to body to know that there's an improvement going, process mm -hmm. going today. Mm -hmm. So you call, go out and yeah. go. Thank you. Board we'll organize the Senator goes ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, also, uh, uh, Secretary of the House members, and uh, yes, uh, Bertie for uh, coming. Uh, Take a five percent cut put it out in your report. You know, I enjoyed your report and I kept everybody's report. And as you know all that, uh, five percent cut put at that time, hundred and fifty thousand could have got. I believe is what I wrote down here. And you know, the tribal scholarship program, if you, you made those amounts of uh, the tribal scholarship program, higher ed compares uh, and, and then the coordinators uh, for each department. Uh, uh, at our vocational, and if this hundred in total is gonna, uh, for the scholarship program, five hundred seventy-nine thousand two hundred twenty-four, and then the uh, higher education, seven hundred fifty thousand ninety-eight dollars in some sense, and at our vocational training, job placement, two hundred thousand uh, two hundred twenty-seven dollar uh, hundred uh, data Johnson O'Malley, one hundred forty thousand. Uh, 225, Absolute Peaceful Language uh, Immersion Project, and that was the state for that, Immersion Kodesh Kodesh for that, for the state that was passed here in their session this year. Uh, not the state, or Troy Yes, yeah. from Administration of Native Americans. Okay. And uh, uh, Gate State, the state is, uh, there's another one under state. They yeah, put the God page, yeah, and then we took our. Yeah. It's it's being allocated. Um, two million could have mm. allocate Kojavio. Mm. I think one million at a time or something like that. So. Eight divided by eight. Uh, the new immersion data and that will take five hundred eighty-six thousand for the child care and development funds. Uh, five hundred eighty-two. $586,843 data pro head start was $2,998,000. Uh, 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 I get a figure that uh, it, it doesn't amount up to 10.5%, but not a lot of education department, but she of coin, uh, yeah. uh, that's what I'm saying. It's $115,000. But Jean Kobe, okay. five percent from each, and I think I put how much they're taking out of each department sequester. Mm. Mm. Okay, I think all I see is uh, yeah, but oh no, no, it's not the five percent is not. But you know we can I can figure that out. But uh, that's the questions that I'm asking. And, uh, this at home. Okay, we are still in the debate portion. Any more questions? Going once, any more questions? Going twice. Third and final call. If not, okay, we will move on to the next. <coughs> Being that this is a confirmation, there's no amendments or anything to the confirmation of this uh, LR. I will call for a motion to waive second reading and move on to final roll call vote. The final roll call vote will be a uh, secret ballot vote. Well, that's third in the committee. All right. All right, I misread here. So I was just reading the. Uh, Robert's rules of order for a final for the 
vote would be if Okay. Confirmation hearing, secret ballot, but full body. Full body is open. All right. All right. I, I misread the rule number nine then. So at this time, we'll call for a motion to waive second reading and move on to final roll call vote. Whoever wants to make the motion. I make that motion. We have a motion on the floor to waive second reading. We want to find out vote. Second. By Senator Rivers, second by Senator Not Afraid of the Bighorn District. Question by Senator Covers up. All those in favor of the motion to waive second reading and move on to final roll call vote, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Secretary of the House 13? Yep. Secretary of the House reports 13 yes. Zero no, zero abstain. We'll move on to final roll call vote. Starting with Senator Pretty Paint. Pretty Paint, Black Lodge, yes. Other minutes, no, yes. Not afraid, Ashpati, check, no. Go with it. Yes. All the big horn, yes. Out of three, big horn, yes. Big green, arrow creek, yes. Uh, goes ahead, bop one, yes. Real bird, my view, yes. Back home, my view, abstain. Stuart, you go straight man, yes. Old cross position, yes. Shane Reno, yes. By the Secretary of the House. Resolution passes for nomination with a vote of 11 yes, one no, one abstain. At this time, we are going to uh, we'll do the oath of office. Would you like to say a word of thank you, the nominee? Oh, um, we couldn't, I'm a little hot getting away, no value, but I hope I'll see you. All right, uh, well, do the, uh, oak also. Let's turn on the Bible raise your right hand, and then just uh, repeat after me. Okay, so I, Bernina Rearward, as legislatively confirmed cabinet head of the Crow Tribal Department of Education. I, Bernina Rearward, as the legislative, legislatively confirmed cabinet head of the Crow Tribal Department of Education. Do solemnly swear to faithfully executive my authorities and duties and will to the best of my ability support do solemnly swear to faithfully ex executive my authorities and duties and will, will to the best of my ability support and defend the Crow Tribal Constitution. And all Crow Tribal laws and policies enacted in further furtherance thereof for the benefit of the Crow Tribal Indians, so help me God. And all the Crow Tribal laws and policies enacted in furtherance thereof for the benefit of the Crow tribe of Indians, so help me God. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, we've got one cabinet head taken care of. And we have some other committees. Uh, floor organized Senator Alden of the Bighorn District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. And in this case, just this time, I'd like, like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Barry for coming over for this confirmation process. I know this is one of the uh, first ones in this positive change to come for confirmation. It's uh, kind of a little process, but I'd just like to congratulate her and uh, 
Oh. Well, recognize the senator not afraid of the laws of justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the body, um, with your permission, Speaker, just a quick update on Health and Human Services uh, hearing for the nominee for cabinet head for that Health and Human on the executive side. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. I spoke with some of the members this morning as well as the secretary of the committee uh, pre-paint, and uh, we are currently going to contact the nominee, uh, Jacqueline Stewart, and within the next week or two at the most, we are going to have a confirmation hearing, and uh, as I spoke with you earlier, Speaker, there'll be another special session in a couple weeks, and that's when I'm sure we'll be ready to present it to the floor. Yes, uh, we are ex I'm expecting another request for a special session pertaining to the amendments to the gaming ordinance. So that should be within the, every day. I keep hearing they're trying to get to us this day, so it's been two or three days now, but hopefully some before. Maybe by tomorrow we'll hear from them. The floor organized Senator Alden, the Bighorn District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm just going to back up a little bit, go, go back to this confirmation process. I know we got our maybe a legal jail while you're in uh, the room here. Um, just to make a point here, it makes no sense to secret ballot vote in a committee and then come out and, and raise your hand on the floor to make the final vote. What's the purpose? Good secretary. Uh, I might be able to answer part of that. One of the part of it is that point of order. They asked him the question. <laughs> All right. All right. I guess the question is meant for legislative legal. So go ahead, Jay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Secretary, members of the legislature. I almost made a full session without addressing the body. Uh, short version. Now. Short version. Here comes. Uh, if you take a look at uh, Rule 31 of your Rules of Order, which was uh, added by LR 1009, every legislator is entitled to a secret ballot vote on the floor during confirmation. It's not an absolute requirement and we've never done it. It's always been uh, a show of hands to a roll call vote. Um, but if one senator cites that privilege, it, we go into a secret ballot vote. And so the speaker technically was right. We could have conducted this in a secret ballot vote at the request of one, every legislator has that privilege to make that request. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a roll call vote. So we can clarify, I just spoke with the Sergeant Arms about this. We can clarify the rules to either go one way or another if we want to have secret ballot votes on the floor or whether we want to have uh, a roll call vote where there's a record showing what what the vote was for each individual legislator. That's the judgment call of the legislature, but I think it would be good to revisit this confirmation process from top to bottom. Um, we've talked about this in the past, if nothing else, to, to revise our rules so that we don't have rules within rules. That brought confusion to the legislature in the past because steps. it should say steps, right? Uh, steps in the confirmation process versus rules. Someone talks about rule four of the confirmation process, then someone else is gonna reference rule four of our rules of order. But so we can clarify that and perhaps next session around the corner we can uh, address that with the new revised rule 31. Okay, thanks. Floor organized, Senator Alden. Thank you. The reason I asked that, I remember when we had this confirmation process before, that was the main reason why we had a secret ballot was to get to the end and, and have that secret ballot. So I mean, that's why I asked that question. It's because I remember that was that was the main reason we wanted the secret ballot at the end. So it made no sense to do it that way. The way we did it. Floor organized Senator covers up. Yeah, I brought that issue up uh, that we in the committee. So to, I would make a motion to have a secret ballot in the man here. Uh, he said, no, it's up to the body, you know, and that, uh, so that was a lot of confusion there still. So, you know, 
the secret ballot should be here on the main floor, not in committee. So, you know, that we twist everything around and trying to correct it now, and that's not so, it's already set. So, that's all I gotta say. I agree with you, Senator Corso, that I believe the floor should be the secret ballot. The floor needs to be the secret ballot. And the committee, yeah, on a confirmation. But in the committee, it's up to the committee if they want to go secret ballot or out in the open, but I think the floor should be secret ballot. Go ahead, Senator Corso. Yeah, another thing I just want to mention that uh, the chairman has the authority over the Head Start program. Nobody else. So, you know, they have to live on in kind donations, not money wise and stuff like that. The parents and the local Head Start, they're the ones that uh, do the process of the in kind to get a little bit more money from the community. And that's how you uh, get your scores up into the DC area. And, uh, the process is uh, simple. The committee is uh, very strong in these uh, Head Start, so they're the ones that have to push and recruit these parents to get their kids checked. their seven components, check their teeth, and, uh, all those kind of stuff. So, you know, it's a challenge, but you do it at this time, so you're ready during the fall time. So there's a lot of things attached to it, but uh, nobody else has uh, any uh, say except the chairman in that area. So we ran into that problem and we tried to get the chairperson to come and sign that everything, all the components were finalized and uh, ready to go. And the director, national director was here waiting for that individual to talk to her, what her responsibility is, but she never showed up. So then we had to just kind of let it go and send it through the mail, I guess that time to get it signed. So it, there's a lot of important stuff in that area. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's committees there to get the support. That's what they need. But to say so belongs to the chairman. So we tried to, to turn that around and said, well, he said you could take it away from him, but he's the one that applied for it, you know for the funding, so that's where the key is. Oh, thank you. Now this brings us to the close of the session. We have one announcement. Um, Secretary of the House. Um, I don't know what the process with this is, but uh, I guess I'm just gonna wing it on this one. Um, we just wanted to show a certificate of recognition uh, for one of our members here, newly elected. Uh, we did that with uh, myself, uh, Senator Plainfeather, Senator Half, and Senator uh, Backbone, uh, who were vet who are veterans of the armed services. And today we would like to uh, give this to Senator Stewart of the Wilder District uh, on behalf of the branch uh, his, for his rec rec in recognition of his service to the country uh, for the freedom of speech with, for which we have and all our freedoms. <clears throat> he, was, uh, he was a veteran of uh, Desert Storm. Uh, he was on the front page of Associated Press during one of the battles, I don't know if any of you ever seen it, but I seen it when uh, the old administration building, they had it posted up there. And we were, he made us very proud. Uh, if you have anything to say? It's, oh, Secretary, uh, Speaker, body. It's uh, a big deal. And the to show freedom isn't free. Yeah. Veterans, they recognize it. Put them, oh my, oh. All right, so that brings us to any more announcements. Do we have any announcements this time? For organized Senator Pretty Paint. Uh, this morning we found out that uh, transportation, me and Noel and 
hopefully Jay, we're going to be traveling to Minnesota on Monday to attend a, a meeting on transportation, coalition of transportation, then we'll be back that night. Okay. All right, so there's, there's also, we uh, got word that there's a meeting in Denver next week, Thursday at, at the HUD office. Friday, Department of Energy, DMD. Uh, talked with Senator Stewart of Black Lives District. I was waiting to hear from the executive, but they told him to go ahead and give me the message that anyone who wants to go, to go ahead and uh, make the uh, arrangements to uh, meet with them over there as they go through those meetings, that it's, it's open for legislative to come to as well. So it's a HUD, it's a HUD meeting and a DEMD meeting. So. You know, that's, that's what uh, Senator Stewart was saying so what I said, well, I'm just waiting to hear from them and see what's, what exactly is on the agenda. So, but I haven't seen the email yet, but if I get the email or anything on paper, we'll put out a sign-up sign up list tomorrow, if anyone's interested. That's all I have for announcements. Anything else? If not, we'll call for a motion to adjourn. Yes. All right. We still have. Uh, are the paychecks here yet? Oh, she went after him. So he's got to come back after his check. <laughs> Oh yes, we also got an email from the vice chair that there's a meeting with the flathead on on HUD Monday and Tuesday. That's uh. Yeah, that is through uh, the vice chair. So, so I'll get a hold of them here in a little bit and ask for some sort of a backup on that. Senator Stewart does have an email concerning that. Okay, so Senator Stewart has an email. Maybe he can forward it to you. Okay. Just an idea. Sergeant Arms, is he outside or? No worries, thanks. Who I got a comment, even though we lost quorum, it's for Greasy Mom. Let's <laughs> 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 we'll go back for his check. Yep. Speaker, yes. if I could. Go ahead. Greasy Mom. Ball on to the later. Big old vote publicly if I'm going to vote no. Secret ballot. Oh, no. away. <laughs> Look up. Yeah. See? School board.